we thank God for the privilege of another night where we get to log in and see brothers and sisters who went through what I went through today, who fasted like I fasted, who sacrificed like I sacrificed. We get to touch bases and agree that we're going to make it to tomorrow again in the name of Jesus. So at this time, I'm calling y'all to worship. I'm calling you in. I'm bringing your mind in because it's time to worship. At this time, I'm going to take just a moment to read through the consecration scriptures. They were brief this morning. We're coming from Matthew chapter seven, verses 13 and 14. I'm gonna share my screen because you might be logged in, but you may not you know, have it in front of you. So I'm gonna share my screen. It says, enter ye at the straight gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go therein, excuse me, which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth to life and few there be that find it. Amen. I pray I showed the right screen. I didn't check. Amen. Um, all right. At this time, I'm going to turn the service over into the hands of Mother Mabry um, to uh, lead us in a just a few moments of praise and worship. And the next voice you will hear after that will be our consecration message, which will be coming from Aspire Missionary Josie, middle name Rippy. Now she hasn't told me her middle name, but I could tell you a little bit about her because I've, I've seen her for a little while. This is a woman who was faithful. This is a woman who serves loyally. This is a woman who has a passion for the work that she does in church. So we thank God for her tonight. We are looking forward to God pouring into us through her um, and that he's not gonna leave her empty, but he's gonna fill her up as she pours out unto us what thus saith the Lord. At this time, I turn you into the hands of praise and worship. Say amen as they come. Good evening, everyone. Thank God for his loving kindness on this evening. And we're just gonna sing some um, wholesome songs that we've heard before in the sanctuary. Lord, you are welcome in this place. Lord, you are welcome in this place. Lord, you are welcome in this place. Have your way. Move by your spirit in this place. Move by your spirit in this place. Move by your spirit in this place. Have your way. Send your anointing in this place send your anointing in this place send your anointing in this place have your way heal and deliver in this place heal and deliver in this place heal and deliver in this place have your way welcome into this place welcome into this broken vessel you desire to abide in the praises of your people so we lift our hands as we live our hearts as we offer up these praise unto your name welcome into this place welcome into this broken vessel you desire to abide 
in the praises of your people. So we lift our hands as we lift our heart, as we offer up this praise unto your name. Lord, you are welcome in this place. Lord, you are welcome in this place. Amen. Thank you. Amen, amen. Oh, God is truly welcome in this place. Um, just wanted to start out with a bit of, bit of prayer. Lord, I thank you for this opportunity, oh God to speak to your people, oh God. I, I'm not foolish enough, oh God, to think that I can do it on my own strength and on my own knowledge and on my own wisdom, oh God. But I need you every step of the way, oh God. Word my mouth, oh God, so that the people will get, oh God, what it is that you have for them, oh God. That you, oh God, will be edified in what it is that I say, oh God. And you, oh God, will get the glory out of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. <sighs> So uh, once again, we come around to consecration where, um, you know, it's not always, it's not always easy to um, prepare a message. And I say that because of course, uh, like, um, I don't know how else anyone else prepares for it, but usually um, God is dealing with me with something um, before I end up, before I go you know, before him, um, if I, like, he's, um, you know, he's pretty much already given me a topic even before I know I've had to speak, um, but you kind of go through a few things, and he shows you a few things, and I, I just thank God, and tonight, um, we are coming from Matthew uh, 7, verses 13 and 14. I'm going to read it again, but I'm going to read it in the New Living Translation. And the new translation says, you can enter God's kingdom only through the narrow gate. The highway to hell is broad and its gate is wide for the many who choose that way. But the gateway to life is very narrow and the road is difficult and only a few ever find it. And so I come to you tonight because I know our uh, topic for during our consecration is a new life in Christ. But tonight I titled it, I'm chasing a new life in Christ. But first I have to lose the weight. And so in order for us to get into heaven, we have to give up some things because the gate to get there is narrow, but the gate to get to hell is wide and will accommodate anyone that so chooses to go through it. I'm going to tell you about how God showed this to me, um, and I hope you'll get the understanding that I did, uh, because true indeed, everyone wants to make it through the gate. Every, we, we all want to get through the, straight, through the straight and narrow gate, but no one wants to do the things necessary to get there. And this is the way that God showed me, and he showed it to me through a weight loss journey. And he said, with the, like, with the, usually with the weight loss journey, the easiest part is saying yes. Just like a life in Christ, it starts out as a yes. And honestly, that is the easiest part is saying the yes. But the problem comes in is when you have to do the yes. And so I think about like a New Year's resolution. We're always, you know, we, we make a New Year's resolution. I'm going to go to the gym. Yay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start watching my diet. I'm going to start losing weight. I'm, I'm going to serve God more. I'm going to read my word more. I'm going to pray more. I'm going to fast more. We, we all do that. Um, but we often struggle with doing our yes. And Paul tells us in Romans 7 and 19, New Living Translation, it says, I want to do what's good, but I don't. I, I don't want to do what is wrong, but I do it anyway. So we all, like, again, we all want to get into the narrow gate, but sometimes we, we don't want to do what it takes to get there. 
And that willingness to continue to do what is wrong, that's sin. That's one of the things that we have to give up. Just like in a weight loss journey, one of the things we have to give up is some foods. It's hard to give up sin because you know what? It felt so good when we were doing it. Because if it didn't feel good, we wouldn't have done it. Just as it's hard to give up food because it tastes so good. It's hard to give up those fried chicken wings. It's hard to give up those things that make our bodies, that make our flesh feel good. And so in a weight loss journey, there's a purpose. And so I've been watching this show called My 600 Pound Life. I don't know if anybody have ever heard it. So it's about, uh, it goes through a year journey of people that are either 600 pounds, really close to 600 pounds or bigger. Um, and it goes through the process of them like going to this doctor and the doctor tells them first, first and foremost, hey, you got to lose 50 pounds before we'll even, you know, approve you for surgery. And so the, they go through the process of a few months of losing the weight on their own without surgery, then they'll get surgery. And then once they have surgery, then they, you know, they, they're supposed to continue to lose the weight. But what I noticed in the show is there's so many people in, and it looks from the outside looking in, it looks like it's like you have all these people, some of them are bedridden, they can't go nowhere, they can't do anything. And you're like, well, how did they get this big? You know, just don't give them food or just choose not to eat. But I look at that in the spiritual world, like it's God tells us we can go to heaven. We, you know, but if it's so easy, why do we continue to sin? Why do we continue to do those things that are not healthy for us spiritually? And I looked at it the same exact way because there's a hold on us. There's a, just like, there's some things that we feel that we have to do. There's some things that we feel that we have to eat. And that's what make, that's what makes our weight loss journey um, more complicated. And so the common goal for all of them on this show is to live longer and have a better life because the way that they are currently living is killing them. And our common goal as believers should be to live better and have eternal life to make it through the narrow gate. And just like in a weight loss journey, I wrote down some things um, like in your weight loss journey and then in your life in Christ, you know, and how they kind of, they're, they're kind of the, very similar. And in a weight loss journey, you can't do the same thing and expect different results. Like you can't continue to, you know, purge all that, put, eat 30,000. There was literally someone on that show that ate like 30,000 calories a day. I don't know how, but they did it. And, but, and also in our life in Christ, we can't continue to sin and, and expect to grow stronger in God. On a weight loss journey, we have to give up some foods that we really like. It, it, we, we can't eat all the cake and ice cream that we want. We can't eat all the pies and cookies. And that's just like a life in Christ. We have to give up some habits, some people, and some activities that we really like. But it's detrimental to us making it into the gate. We have to exercise on our weight loss journey the same way we have to exercise in our life with Christ. And how do we do this? We, do, we exercise our spirit man with praise, prayer, and worship. And we have to shop different. Um, whenever you are trying to lose weight, you don't go buy the same foods. You don't buy, you know, you don't, you buy more vegetables and you eat less meat and you're eating leaner cuts of meat. Well, as our, as Christians, we have to do the same thing. We don't do the same things um, that we find. We have to find things that will edify our spirit. We have to do activities and search for things that will edify our spirit, and not just things that will edify our flesh. We reduce our calorie intake whenever we're trying to lose weight. And as a Christian, we, we reduce our sin output as we're trying to get through the gates. We reduce our healthy, we research healthier food options and recipes. And then as, a life, as Christians, we read and study our word. When we're trying to lose weight, we push ourselves in the gym. And then as Christians, we are supposed to press ourselves to do the things of God. Um, wait, you know, it's, you're supposed to have like an accountability partner, someone that'll help you 
you know, get through what it is that you need to get through whenever you're going through a weight loss because you can't do it on your own. And so you join groups for encouragement. And that's what, as the believer, we're supposed to go to church and fellowship for our encouragement. Um, we, the thing that, that stood out to me the most is time after time on this show, I would see people and you'd see that they wouldn't, you'd, I'd get mad at them because you're not supposed to eat that. And you're not supposed to, you know, you're so, you need to exercise more. And the truth is that during your weight loss journey, you will eat some things that you should not. You'll get set back. But the thing is that you should not stop. You should get back up and continue on. And that's just like, even us in Christ, we fall short. The word tells us that we fall short. So what we should do is we should repent and turn from our sin. And even whenever we fail, even whenever we fall, God is still there to help us along the way, just like on a weight loss journey. The doctors are still there to help you. The people are still there to help you. Just because you fall doesn't mean you should stop. Just because you fall, it doesn't mean that you just revert back. You still need to continue on. We have to understand that we are going to have to give up some things to reach our goal. And it doesn't feel good to go through the shedding process. It makes me think of the cliche that we always say, no pain, no gain. But we must focus on the end goal. Because in order to get our natural body right, we exercise, we push ourselves to get up and do it. We make a conscious decision about what we put in our bodies for nourishment, all of that to help reach our goal. And we have to do the same thing for our spiritual life. We must push ourselves to exercise spiritually. We must pray and fast and read our word. And we must also make conscious decisions about what we feed our spirit man for nourishment. It's like what Philippians 3 and 14 says, I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God through Christ Jesus is calling. We have to continue on in this journey because although it doesn't feel good to shed the weight, our goal is to make it through the narrow gate. And the, our weight is sin. Our weight is those things that easily beset us. We have to understand that Everything can't go through the narrow gate. And you know what? Maybe you feel like you don't have to lose any weight. Maybe you have arrived. Maybe you're comfortable right where you are because in the world of us women, we know they always make a one size fits all. But also remember that the gate to hell is one size fits all. And as for believers, one size fits all does not work for us because we are many different people together, fit together to form one body. And just because, and we all know this, just because you can fit it, doesn't mean that it fits. Just like, Pastor, what size shoe you wear? Nine and a half dress shoe and 10, 10 and a half athletic shoe. Okay, Pastor, those shoes are really large compared to my feet. I can fit in your shoes, Pastor, but it doesn't mean that's where I'm supposed to be or that I can function properly in them. And I say that to say that our goal is the same, but the journey is different. Don't compare your weight loss to mine. Don't compare your sin to mine. Don't compare your gift to mine. Because our weight may be similar, but they're not the same. And just know that everything that we go through is for a purpose. And it's there to help us fit through the narrow gate. Amen. That's all I have.